In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do transposition with solving equations rather than just a flowchart. You'll see on the board that there are flowcharts here, and I'm going to use that to explain what transposition is. From now on, you're not going to be using flowcharts. You will be using just transposition. And when doing transposition, you start with just writing out the equation, and you're going to be showing equations all the way down and you're going to be working down. You don't put another equal sign beside it and then work across. That just doesn't work, all right? What you are basically going to do is find out what the value of x is without a flow chart. And by doing that, you're going to be isolating x on its own on one side of the equal sign while everything else is being solved around it. Okay, so let's see how we're going to unravel this without using a flow chart. I will refer to the flow chart so you understand how we get everything. First of all, in this equation, you've got one x on this side of the, um, of the equal sign, and you want to basically eliminate or, or move all these numbers so that x remains by itself on this side of the, equation, of the equal sign. First thing you're going to do is find out, well, what do I start with first is what your question is. And these flowcharts help you because what it flowchart did was it basically helped you figure out what do I do if this, if you knew what this x was, then you would multiply by negative 4, which is the first one, then you could add five, 7, and then you can multiply by 2, and then it said let's do that backwards. And notice, <coughs> sorry, Notice that when we worked backwards, we always started with the last thing that you would do to that x. So the 4 is attached really tightly. The furthest thing away from the x is what you always start with. All right, it's the reverse of how you would do it if you, were sol if you knew what that x was and you were just calculating. All right, so let's start with that. It, it was times 2, so the opposite of times 2 is divide by 2. So you want to take this 7 minus 4x, because you're dividing out that 2, you're actually getting rid of that 2 from this side, and you're also, and when you divide by that 2, you have to divide by the 2 for this side, so that would be 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So basically, just so that you can see this, what's happened, and some people like to show this, but we want you to just think about, just do it immediately to the other side, but this is what's basically happening. You have 2, times 7 minus 4x is equal to 8. When you divide by 2 on that side, you're also dividing by 2 on this side. You have to treat them equal, equally, so you do the same thing to one side as the other side. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, and you're left with 7 minus 4x equals, and this is basically 4. Okay, that's what you've got there. That's just another way of showing it. Now, the next step was we said that, well, we minus 7 here because that's the opposite from adding 7 because this is shown negative 4x plus 7 is another way of thinking of it. So if you minus the 7, you get 0 from the 7 here, and then you just minus 7 on the other side. So 4 minus 7 is negative 3. And now this says negative 4 times x, the opposite, um, uh, the opposite operation is divide by x. But divide by, sorry, divide by negative 4. So you divide by negative 4 and you get negative 3 over negative 4, which really is just 3 over 4. And you could have just written that as 3 over 4 in this step. I just wanted to show you that's divide by negative 4. Okay, so there's your answer. And if you double check that and you say 3 quarters back in here, 3 quarters times negative 4 is, um, is negative 3 plus 7 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so it's always good to double check if you can. All right, for this next question, it is much more complicated. Again, once again, you'll notice that these examples, this is why it actually says example 5 and the other one said example 4, is because we did it in the video before this. So if you want to refer back to that other video, it will tell you how to do the flow charts and you'll understand you'll get a greater understanding of how we unfolded the equation and then put it back up again. And so I'm using the same examples and you can go back to that. So this was example five from the last video and I'm going to be now going through this as transposition. Again, we unfolded it by 
by multiplying by 4, then subtracting 5, and then multiplying by negative 3, and then adding 8, and then divide by negative 7. Then you go backwards with each one of them. Notice the last thing that was done was that you divide by negative 7 if you, were ju if you knew what that x was at the very end. So we're going to do the opposite to this 13. So instead of divide by negative 7, it says multiply by negative 7. So that's our first step for this. And you do it to the 13. So when you do that, you're basically taking away that negative 7, eliminating it from the left side. And you're saying negative 7 times 13 is negative 91. And now this says times negative 3. The opposite is divide by negative 3. Sorry? Before that, because this is multiplication, that's tighter to that x, this plus 8 would be where we, what we do first. So we want to get rid of that plus 8. The opposite of plus is minus. So we put on that side, it becomes minus 8. So we rewrite this. 3 times negative 5 plus 4x is equal to negative 91 minus 8, which is negative 99. And now when you get to the next step, and it says that the furthest away again from the x is times negative 3, and the opposite of times negative 3 is divided by negative 3, which is what you had here. So you have negative 5 plus 4x equals negative 99 divided by negative 3, which is 33. And now you have the furthest away from the x now on this side is minus 5. So the opposite of minus is add 5. So 4x is equal to 33 plus 5 is 38. And now it's 4 times x. The opposite of times is, or x times 4, if you want to think of it that way. The opposite of times 4 is divided by 4. So x equals 38 divided by 4. And that is the same as 9 and 1 half. And that, of course, is the same as what was found up here when working backwards. So you're doing the same thing, except you're not showing it using a flow chart. You're now using an equation. Notice that the equal signs were one underneath each other to show that this is equal to this, which is, and that is equal to that, which means that this is equal to that, which means that this is equal to that, and so on. And we're keeping that equality all the way down. And that's it.